has been reviews from here in Taiwan and around the world. The Defense Ministry says Taiwan will be partially reimbursed for weapons bought from the U.S. arms maker RTX, formerly called Raytheon. The U.S. government reached a settlement with RTX after it was accused of price gouging its international customers. The arms maker has agreed to return profits gained from inflating prices, including those taken from Taiwan. RTX builds the Patriot missile and radar systems used to defend the country. A defense ministry spokesperson was unable to provide details on the settlement. This the U.S. is Taiwan's most important arms supplier. Tens of thousands of dock workers have gone on strike in the United States. The action puts nearly half of the country's ocean shipping on hold and could cost its economy billions of dollars per day. Cadence Quaranta reports. Dock workers on strike. At major ports across the east and gulf coasts of the United States, tens of thousands of workers have walked out. It's the first large dockers union strike in nearly 50 years. The action comes after port operators and a union that represents about 45,000 dock workers failed to reach an agreement on a new contract by a Monday night deadline. The two sides disagree on pay increases and automation. We're striking because it's, these companies are making a lot of money. We have not been given fair raises in the past. Um, we work in hard conditions. You know, we're out there in the rain, we're out there in the, in the, in the heat. Um, seven days a week, we're here on call. The International Longshoremen's Association, or ILA, initially demanded a 77 percent pay raise for its members, but has since lowered that to just over 61 percent. It also wants a complete ban on automation, which dock workers fear will see their jobs replaced by robots. Who owns the docks? Who owns the docks? The port employers, represented by the U.S. Maritime Alliance, have offered smaller raises and also didn't agree to an automation ban. Automation doesn't feed families. Automation doesn't pay taxes. These are the things our members make their livelihood off there. So we need to make sure we're protected in our job. The strike is affecting ports all down the Atlantic coast, from Maine in the north to Texas in the south, and has put around half of the nation's ocean shipping on hold. Analysts say the strike could cost the U.S. economy billions of dollars per day. And if it continues for more than a few weeks, it could become an economic crisis, and all with the U.S. presidential election just weeks away. So the longer the strike lasts, the uh, two risks come out of it. One of them is political, because there will be a, 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 an increasing impact on inflation, as well as on employment. You know, uh, The other part is, is that if we start running low of inventories of critical goods, especially related to medicine, uh, then we have a national security issue. Doc workers say they aren't trying to force a national crisis. Nobody wants a prolonged strike. Nobody wants to have problems, but you have to fight for what you have to fight for. Recent wage offers exchanged by the two sides suggest they are moving closer to a deal. But until an agreement is reached, an economic crisis looms a major unwanted headache for the Biden administration in the final weeks before the election. Klein Wong and Cadence Quaranta for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's foreign minister has been making the case for the country to join a key trade pact. Taiwan has applied to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, or CPTPP. Its members include Australia and Canada, but China also wants to join. Lin Jialong said Taiwan would help to diversify supply chains away from authoritarian countries that use economic might to achieve their political goals. As we know, Taiwan's uh, semiconductor inter industry ex excels excels in research and design, system integration, R&D, and manufacturing. Taiwan is also a world leader in ICT product manufacturing. This has underlined 
our critical role in maintaining the economic security of the Asia Pacific region and upholding global supply chains. Lin Jialong was speaking at an international seminar on the PAC's need for supply chain resilience. Police are investigating at least 15 cases of scalpers reselling tickets to this year's National Day Celebration concert. 5,000 free tickets to the annual event were scooped up within 15 minutes of their release on Monday. Many of these were later listed online for high prices the same day. Authorities in Taiwan are warning consumers to be vigilant. They've also formed a police task force to help take down the scalpers. Taiwan's Xiaoliuqiu is known for its stunning shorelines. To protect the southern island's natural beauty from over-tourism, the local government has introduced a fee on tourists. But officials are worried that the new policy may not be going as planned. Wesley Lewis explains. Known for its coral reefs, marine life, and picturesque shorelines, Taiwan's outlying Xiaoliuqiu Island is a popular destination for domestic tourists. Part of Pingdong County, Xiaoliuqiu is located southwest of Taiwan's main island. It attracts over a million visitors each year. But local officials are worried about over-tourism damaging the island's delicate ecosystem. In July, Xiaoliuqiu introduced a tourist fee of around two U.S. dollars for entry into three protected shorelines. Conservationists have also set up various restrictions in popular intertidal zones to protect the ecosystem. And the new regulations seem to be working. Last summer, over 18,000 people visited the island's top three protected intertidal zones. But this year, there were fewer than 4,000. But two months into the new policy, local officials have noticed tourists are sidestepping the conservation fee to visit the island's other free beaches. The worry is that unprotected shorelines will suffer instead of protected shorelines. Geban Bay has become popular among tourists looking to sidestep conservation fees, but that may soon change. Critics of the tourist fee argue that charging people money won't fix the problem. Xiaoliuqiu's officials are still working out the kinks in these tourist fees as they try to strike a delicate balance between tourism and ecological preservation. Leon Lian and Wesley Lewis for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more of our stories. Finally, today we leave you with images of this newborn deer at a Polish zoo. The zoo is asking people online to help find a name for the little cutie. I'm Joyce Sin. Take care and see you next time.